Welcome back. I'm Stephanie Rule. Some dramatic new details in Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. Jerome Corsi, a Jersey guy, a right-wing conspiracy theorist linked to longtime Trump associate Roger Stone, tells NBC he believes he will soon be indicted for perjury. Joining me now, NBC's Anna Schechter, who broke the story after speaking with Corsi on the phone. Okie doke. Walk us through this. He told you he's afraid he's going to be indicted for perjury. Some people are saying maybe this is a head fake, perjury for what, framed into perjury. What, what's going on here? He explained to me that he sat down for 40 hours with investigators. Holy there were cow. nine FBI agents, six prosecutors, as he described it. He felt like he was being grilled. They gave him a binder, six to eight inches thick, all of his communications. They knew everything about him, everything he'd said to Roger Stone about Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. And potentially, we reported last month that he actually communicated with the Trump campaign after the October surprise, the dump, the WikiLeaks dump of uh, John Podesta emails, in a sense taking credit for it. But he explained to me that he actually figured out on his own that the Podesta emails were coming. He saw the first dump of WikiLeaks emails. He saw, hey, not so many John Podesta emails. Is he clairvoyant? That's what he, that is his defense, that he did not have advanced knowledge. And that's the heart of it, is did he have advanced knowledge from Julian Assange or some other source, pass it to Roger Stone or pass it to the Trump campaign? And that would be collusion, but we're far from that. We, we don't know that okay, Mueller has that. Okay, far from collusion. But he told you this about the special counsel, quote, they have all your emails and phone records. They're very good at the perjury trap. That's what stuck out to me. Is he suggesting that he's being set up? He's suggesting that he got tripped up, that his mind was mush, as he said. That's a direct quote. After 40 hours of what he called interrogation, that he must have slipped up and said Did something wrong. Did he have a lawyer wrong. with him? He did. So he thinks he slipped up. It was 40 hours of, of high pressure. He can't possibly remember that much. Mm -hmm. Why does he think he's being indicted in the next day or so? Well, he says that... He doesn't believe that he ever met Julian Assange or had advanced knowledge, but perhaps some of those communications or some of those texts or emails that he handed over to investigators might indicate otherwise. But how does this link back to the campaign? Uh, he was not a central player, and there are lots of fringe right-wing conspiracy theorists or, you know, who, who are always trolling for stuff. Does this, does this necessarily link him to the Trump campaign? Well, not necessarily, but this all goes to the Roger Stone circle of these sort of characters who are coming out of oh, the word characters. woodwork. And they're going through Stone's communications, and they probably found Corsi and Stone communications in August, September, October, that crucial time right before and right during that WikiLeaks drop of John Podesta emails. All right, I need to bring in MSNBC legal analyst. This is amazing reporting. And former pro federal prosecutor Glenn Kirshner. Glenn, help me understand. What would Mueller's strategy be by indicting Jerome Corsi? Uh, so, Stephanie, I think Mueller's strategy is uh, is a lot like what we saw him do with Rick Gates when he worked Rick Gates as uh, a witness, then as a defendant and then as a cooperator. Why did he do that? Well, one, Rick Gates committed crimes, but it was also a vehicle to get to Paul Manafort. I see some parallels here between the Mueller team going after Jerome Corsi as a vehicle to get to Roger Stone and perhaps beyond. Um, and when I heard Anna's reporting that Jerome Corsi gives answers like, I can't recall if I've met Julian Assange or you know not. You've, you know if you've met Julian Assange. <laughs> yeah, you, you sure. You probably took a selfie with him. But, you know, when, when I hear that, it's obvious that the investigators and the prosecutors on the Mueller team um, believe that Corsi is lying to them. And I can tell you, here's the challenge, Steph. When investigators and prosecutors have an important witness who is lying to them, you know, if this is the, the, the line of truth, they will try to push and push and push until they get that witness right to the line of truth. And frankly, if they don't get him there, then you know what they're going to do? They're going to indict him for perjury if he lied okay. in the grand jury or false statements if he lied in the investigation and then try to squeeze the truth out of him that way. Then help me here. I'm clearly not a legal scholar, but maybe I'm just an absolute dope because Roger Stone has a theory about all of it. And he says this. 
Dr. Corsi strikes me as a man who has been squeezed hard, but refuses to do anything but tell the truth, which is why they may be indicting him. Okay, so right there for me. All he's done is tell the truth, so maybe he'll get indicted. So, like, let's just say that's me. If I were to tell the truth, there's nothing I'd be indicted for. Exactly. If you're telling the truth, then prosecutors are not going to bring charges against you. And relying on Roger Stone's take on somebody else's credibility, I think, is a dicey proposition. Um, but again, I think Anna was reporting that um, Corsi's explanation for how he knew when and if Podesta's emails were going to drop. Connection? Uh, we're we're going to draw. Yeah, ex you called it the psychic connection. I mean, he's trying to peddle this as insightful speculation on his part. Well, that that strikes all of us as nonsense. And I think that's why the Mueller team is trying to get at the absolute truth. And if they don't get it, then they can and should indict Corsi and squeeze it out of him. My goodness. All right. I got to ask you about what I talked just a few minutes ago with Pete Williams. The state of Maryland is now planning to ask a federal judge to declare Rod Rosenstein acting attorney general and not Matt Whitaker. How's this thing going to play out? So I'll tell you, this is really an interesting one because there is something called the political question doctrine. And what that stands hmm. for is when a political decision is taken by an administration, the courts are loath to jump into it and begin to litigate that issue. So, for example, if somebody just really didn't like the ideology of an, a presidential nominee, well, guess what? That's the president's call and the courts will not intervene. This, I think, moves beyond the political question doctrine because we have an acting attorney general who, by, by most accounts, is an unlawful appointment. And I agree with Neil Katyal and I agree with George Conway, who jointly authored that, um, that column concluding that this violates the Constitution. It violates the Appointments Clause. I think that's a winning argument. So even though typically um, these kind of presidential nominations are political questions that the court will not venture into, I actually think the state of Maryland might have standing, which just means they okay. might actually have a legal reason to bring this suit. So just stay with me on that, because until now, I, I read what Neil wrote and what George Conway wrote and what I, I heard from you. And, and while it might be true, they, you guys are legal scholars. You don't make these decisions. Is there a legal basis? Because as far as Republican leadership, elected officials who could stand in the way and say, not so fast, Mr. President, they haven't said anything. Well, yeah, yeah. I think oversight is coming. It's not coming until January, perhaps, once um, the, the new Congress is sworn in. But um, I, I do think there's a legal basis. And I think the courts will say we're typically not inclined to get involved. However, if this is an unlawful appointment as the head of the Department of Justice, that could actually compromise every single thing the Department of Justice does every day. That will have a ripple effect and give all litigants um, an opportunity to attack what the Department of Justice is doing in their investigations and prosecutions. So I think this is one the courts may very well take up. When you say oversight is coming, I can hear you say winter is coming. And then I really get the chills. Glenn, Anna, thank you so much. When we come back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.